James is having Asian salad and if you want some orange on it that'd be good and I'm going to talk or well James will talk about Crosby Stills National Young and then I'll talk about the Bureau and I'm just comparing it to James Bond 007 the last movie that I watched but um, so did you want to eat the orange and that because this is better for on the salad Okay, I'll, I'll save the orange for you. Yeah, and then you can eat Just the orange salad. at your leisure. Yeah, and that then would be better. Put as much of this dressing as I, you want. I don't know if I'll need much of it. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Is, uh, pretty fancy. Uh, yeah, pretty fancy salad. You even like roasted the peanuts. It, I did. It uh, uh, it, and I did, you can see they're a bit dark. I should have. Um, no, that doesn't. Matter. I shouldn't have went downstairs. I, my calves are really hurting because um, so we went on a took hike. You a while to come we back did upstairs. Carthew Alderson yesterday and then um, I went on a big walk today around town. I don't know why. I don't know what I was thinking because I was doing okay before I did that. Well, and then, you did a couple of walks actually. Yes. Do you need me breakfast. to open that? Yeah, if you would. I'm afraid. I'm All right. kind of uncoordinated. Well, you're I'm talking about Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young oh. anyway, right? I guess. Right. Let so, go right, yeah, right so now. you go ahead and talk okay. about that. So, anyway, Pauline uh, walked uh, down to a pancake breakfast. It wasn't that far, but... No, that one was uh, fine. Then she it was went the to big another one pancake I tried breakfast that... Where somewhere along the line, the address was wrong, either at source or Pauline got it wrong. These things happen, and then she walked down to the library, checked a bunch of stuff up about cars and so on. So, speaking of cars, we had our first road trip with our new acquisition, and uh, Pauline uh, drove down to Waterton. She mentioned it all. Carthew Alderson, it's called. Do it in that order. If, you take, if someone takes the shuttle from the town side up, because you yeah. tend to only want to do it one way. Yeah, we've done it from the bottom up um, before, and uh, we haven't all. done it, yeah, not all the way. Uh, only. Um, like up to maybe the first or I think there's three Carthy Lakes, yeah, eh? Carthy. So maybe Peter the Noster first or second, Lakes. but we don't do all the way up. Well, uh, actually, when we, we went go. Uh, pretty close to the end of the third. Oh, okay. One time. The one time. And uh, we were blocked by snow. Yeah, but that's it. Is If you want to go earlier, like there are so many flowers to see yeah. on that. That's why that hike is my favorite one in Waterton to do because there's just so much diversity of um, environments for the flowers to grow on because you, you roll through so many elevations while you're hiking there. So um, if you want to catch the flowers at the beginning part of the trail, uh, uh, well there's some right now like Prince's Pine is blooming and stuff like that and there was, uh, we were mostly hiking with a group that James had been talking to earlier on and so he was talking to them and then they were friendly with me and so then I was talking with them um, and yeah so uh, one man he was asking what are those pretty blue berries and I I thought Queen's Cup and then I asked him oh wait where are you talking about the ones right near the ground and he said yeah and I said yeah Queen's Cup <laughs> so um, anyway they were they're quite inquisitive. Very huh? interesting looking berries. And I hadn't known that um, Queen's Cup had berries like that. Or whatever you would call them. Some sort of fruit. Um, That's why it's good to do it walks. Wouldn't really at, be a, uh, it wouldn't be a berry. Um, good to do walks at a variety of times. Yeah. Because, I mean, you see the Queen's Cup in the spring. You know, June, whatever. And then uh, you come back and you go... I know this plant, you know, I know the leaves, whatever. And here, look at this fruit. I didn't know the fruit. And now you do, right? So, like, I hadn't known um, what their fruit looked like. Oftentimes in books, you'll find a picture of the flower. 
and a description of the fruit sometimes or whatever but uh, sometimes not you know it really depends uh, sometimes sometimes the descriptions are not as not as good as one would hope but um, anyway it's great to keep returning to different places at different times and so yeah if you want to see the flowers on the bottom half uh, although there's some blooming like I said right now princess pine you won't see that in the spring you'll see that right now um, but a lot of the flowers they bloom in the spring and then now you're seeing the fruit and that's a great thing to see too um, but yeah if you want to see those spring flowers you go up from the bottom of Carthew so by the camera falls you go up and you will be blocked by the snow eventually you won't go all the way but it doesn't matter because the stuff right up top that's not going to be blooming for months now it's blooming and well in July so uh, we saw a lot of blooms this time up top and not so many down below but lovely it's a wonderful walk so if you uh, go over the hump as I call it uh, the they call it the Carthew call. It's not really a call. We'll call it a saddle. No, I suppose it wouldn't be the call. The call would be way up there. No, the it? uh, call is actually more. It's uh, oh. kind of where we saw those guys going up Mount Alderson. So you come down a long ways. Okay. You know how steep Off it the is. ridge. Off the ridge. Okay. So, I, uh, I don't know these things. The James knows so many things. Yeah, well, I've read the description. That's the way a guy in, who looks to be the expert on scrambles uh, describes it. The Rockies. Yeah. Uh, he, he points that out. Mm -hmm. So it's not me saying it, it's him saying it. So it's better described actually as a ridge. It's a little ridge going out to a promontory. But uh, yeah. that's close to the high point of the trail. You go up a little higher from there and then you come well down. It's a uh, a little bit slidey actually. Uh, I noticed young, much younger people were taking it very, very slowly coming down. You know, there's that big party of more than six people. Mm. I saw them from a distance, but I could see they were kind of inching their way down. So, anyway. But uh, I was going to say, oh. from if you go up the Alders, if you go make it the Alderson Carthew route all the way to Cameron. <laughs> going to need two cars yeah it wouldn't be a shuttle for you no and you're going to have to go up I believe it's something like uh, a thousand plus meters so what we did yesterday involved something I think like 700 meters <laughs> much preferable a thousand meters and you'd be coming down one of the things you want to avoid I think is having shaky legs or whatever be really tired when you're coming down mm -hmm. and you'd be coming down some relatively dangerous stuff I, if you're young I don't think there's a risk of death but uh, you could get mangled up fairly badly if you stumbled off the pathway on the Cameron Lake side of uh, uh, the trail so or Cameron Lake end of the trail yeah but everybody really does it the one way well we see some people coming up from the bottom too but I don't know they if don't I've ever seen anyone yeah. coming over the hump no I saw someone coming over the hump yesterday passes going up the trail I thought wow he must have been running but to I make think it down the, to the town people side. ask me how many times we've done the whole thing like that um, up from Cameron Lake uh, down to Cameron Falls and I honestly I couldn't remember <laughs> And well, it's a minimum I, of three times now. I know. I said, I said, I think maybe three or four, and then I thought, no, I think four, but I think I'm it's, not. I think it's four after. It yesterday. might but not. I don't but like over. Yeah, I don't numbers. either. And but we've done it from the bottom too, and that's nice too. So honestly, I like the the bottom part of the trail much more than the top part. But that's just me. But, uh, I think uh, it's highly unusual, actually. Most, like the scrambler said, it's just like a, uh, uh, a trudge from the exciting part. Yeah, I know. Most the people like the the ridge hike and all that. You know, the hiking on the switchbacks and the street. I go for the flowers. So, like this time of year, yeah, that's great because I get to see flowers still. You know, but. Um, and 
some flowers that like we were seeing a lot of yellow columbine and stuff like that you know which we haven't seen that since june but uh it's up there <laughs> it's way up there so it's it's blooming way up there right um right now whereas it's not blooming down below but James got to watch Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young in the van on the way to the drive because we got a new vehicle, uh, well, a new used vehicle, and... Very used vehicle, yes, so it's too. not as though we're no. driving around in luxury. No, but it's very luxury for us. We've never had things like this. This has a DVD player in it, and so I thought, well, you're going to have to test it out. So I drove down in the morning uh, to Waterton, and we're up however you want to look at it I suppose it's elevation it's up and um, James sat and watched the DVD so that's he got through that and that's that's lovely he really enjoyed it it's so little of a luxury for us it's uh, uses more than us I'm fairly sure than the previous vehicle that we've been with very exceptions since we acquired it just walking around town. Yeah, we're trying to just keep up the walking around town thing and using it. Because really when we got the vehicle, the um, last car, the station wagon in the first place, we wanted it so that we could travel. That's That was the thing. We didn't want it to be um, like a, a wheelchair to take us around in town. Well, it had to kind of serve that It had to me. for a while. I just I know. But you've gotten stronger. Even though I've gotten older. Yeah. Considerably older. Uh, but we'll see, what, I was pretty we'll see what you can handle. Recovered, recovered from my, was recovered well, from you got to do what you got to do. I mean, that it. wasn't the plan, but you have to. You yeah, we it. got it actually before yeah. I got. Uh, <laughs> I had yeah. bone marrow cancer well before we got the car, but we didn't know about it. No, and we were planning specifically, to go on trips. The doctors had no clue. They didn't even think anything was wrong. Absolutely yeah. shameful. One of these days I'm going to talk about that, then mm. yeah, I'll be advising some people to put their earplugs in and earmuffs over that because I might uh, so it use like a few customers. So it seemed like this was sort of, it seemed like they were doing a chronological thing. It was done chronologically from what I can tell. Mm. And they kind of pulled the plug on it before they really got, uh, well, Steve still started to really somehow or another lose his voice, I'm not sure why. It was more catastrophic, I think, for Steve Stills than for, say, Frank Sinatra. I think Frank Sinatra lost a bit of his hearing, and uh, maybe it was from Mafia Dons whispering sweet nothings in his ear. I'm not sure. Anyway, including over 90 minutes of this occasional quartet, and it's only occasional, recorded live for TV broadcasts across their career. So it's uh, not as though it's one. TV broadcast. It's when they got together, and I guess on TV, featuring performances given in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and up into the 90s, but not up in anything more recent. I guess you could say almost, thank heavens. All in great quality. This film is an exceptional collection of rare Crosby, Nash, Stills, Nash and Young appearances. You know, they didn't show, for example, Woodstock, everyone of a certain age. I've seen that, me, I've seen it multiple times. And uh, so the what they cover is Southern Man by Neil Young. He did it solo, but uh, on record. And then On the Way Home, that's uh, one of the two songs he contributed to, the Buffalo Springfield's last album. Uh, neither of them were actually that good. They weren't that bad. Birds, so the first three songs, four songs, uh, were written by Neil Young. So Birds was again not put out on record. Same album as Southern Man by Neil Young. They did a pretty good uh, version of that actually. And uh, they did a pretty good version of Southern Man. On the way home pretty good, but uh, it's not a great vehicle. Then they did Down by the River, and I'm telling you, I think they did a better version than Neil Young's again solo version that was on the second album, as I recall, and uh, they did a great job on that one, based with uh, two lead guitars, Danny Whitten, who did a great job, one of the best rhythm guitar jobs I've ever heard on the album, A Casualty to Opioids, way back when, 
1974, 1974. Then the one thing that really got me, Long Time Gone, which is a very political song, in a kind of a, a abstract way by, written by David Crosby, but lead singer Tom Jones. So a kind of, uh, it's a kind of funny. I wouldn't call it ridiculous. He just does a pretty darn good job. This kind of twisting around and stuff like that. I'm going, yeah, that's when you're singing songs to the babies. Like a long time gone, I wouldn't be twisting around the way that you do it. Or to Tom Jones, let's say that. He's still alive. I hope he is. He's a pretty innocuous kind of person from what I can tell. Then they did Immigration Man, and that's uh, Nash. Song, so he's complaining about going through immigration. Maybe they're looking for dope or whatever. Well, you know, don't bring dope through customs. You know, you know, like, so he's whining about that. That's, you know, that's a great vehicle. Do Helpless, uh, again, another young composition. And there, as I recall, Tony Mitchell helps out. Military Madness, uh, yeah, again, another weak composition by Graham Nash. So he does this military madness was something like ruining our country. So it's when he was born. So he would have been born during World War II. Well, it, you know, it wasn't the country falling apart because of its own silliness or whatever. It's getting attacked from the outside. So it's military madness, but it had to be dealt with. I don't know if he's a pacifist. Should they have just let the Germans stomp in? Some people think so. I personally think that's madness of a different sort to think that way. And then he jumps to uh, something like the present. I think that was put out maybe around 72. Military madness was, I can't remember, was it ruining their country or something like that. So this would be, I, I gather, he was against the Vietnamese War, as well. many uh, people in the rock profession back then. And I'm going, yeah, no, that's not the same thing. You know, uh, from his point of view, from my point of view, military madness was ruining Vietnam, and it wasn't the Americans doing that, it was the colonies doing that. The Viet Cong were supposed to be insurgents, they're really invaders into South Vietnam, uh, were the ones doing the ruining, and they're still their descendants, uh, physical and mental and spiritual are still in that country. And thank heavens the Americans uh, put their, uh, for a while, they put their boot, it's a military boot, they were tough in Vietnam, on the commies and act long enough for uh, them not to be able to spread their commie idiocy. I said something else that starts with an A. Uh, idiocy, uh, any, any more in Southeast Asia. Asia beyond Laos and Cambodia. Almost cut my hair. Rolling Stone laughed at that one. And that was uh, released. That would be off of Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Young's first album. Because um, he was acting as though uh, was cutting his hair was the ultimate sacrifice or something like that. And I guess he ultimately didn't do it. Uh, they do a pretty good job with that. Teach your children. Kind of a weak little vehicle by Graham Nash. I much preferred the album version where they got Jerry Garcia, the lead guitarist for Grateful Dead. Very much dead. No, I don't think he's grateful about it anymore. Uh, he was playing, of all things, steel guitar. And, that thing. and only love can break your heart. They did a lot of stuff from Neil Young's third solo album. And they, I think they did a great job. Apparently Young wrote that for, uh, as a Neil Young composition, wrote that for about uh, Graham Nash. He was going through a little bit of a breakup or something like that. Daylight Again, Find the Cost of Freedom. I don't know who wrote Daylight. Oh, Stills wrote both. I love uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash, and or Young, doing Find the Cost of Freedom. It's a wonderful little song. Only Love Can Break Your Heart, uh, they did that acoustic guitar, the earlier version on this DVD, they did it with piano, a lot of the original. Which did you prefer? I kind of like the 
I liked hearing them go at it uh, with acoustic guitars. I love Stephen Stills when he does acoustic. He's originally a folky, at least uh, you know when he's trying to break into the business. He probably was heavy to get into rock and roll in the 50s and stuff like that because he's got some pretty good chops there. But they did a good job on it. Uh, I love Steve Stills. Maybe that's my favorite part of Steve Stills' oeuvre collection of works is when he's working steel, uh, when he's working with uh, acoustic guitar. It's just a lovely acoustic guitar player. Then they did Southern Cross, another, uh, it was written, co-written with a couple, I didn't realize this, Steve Stills' vehicle, but it's co-written with a couple of people called Curtis. And it's about him sailing, I guess, down in the South Seas. I always loved that song. Although, uh, searching for the woman, girl, yeah, you know, that was in the 70s, mid-70s. Talking about women being girls is kind of silly back then. And then they do another version of Teach Your Children. And, uh, okay, that's a bit much of this. I don't think there was a decent Nash vehicle in this whole thing. Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, uh, they did a good version, not nearly as good as Woodstock, mainly because Steve Stills only playing guitar and uh, it suffers at the fourth part of the suite. It's, uh, 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 Steve Steele's again does a great job as he did on Woodstock but uh, on the uh, part where they're going do 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 and Steve Steele's is singing Spanish it sounds to me in the background there's just not enough oomph so uh, in when they did in Woodstock as I recall David Crosby was playing very rhythm guitar, very basic rhythm guitar from what I could tell, but he did a good job. And it kind of moves it along. Then they did something called This Old House, is a little bit sentimental. It's about uh, property repossession, stuff like that. A, a farm, I think. Or something. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, you know, like he's singing about dad or something like that, or is it a dad talking about his kids? I don't know if he knew much about his dad being faithful to kids. His, his dad uh, kind of deserted his mom and really deserted Neil Young. I gather he wasn't coming across with the Child support payments. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely shameful. I could be wrong about that. Long may you run. And uh, that uh, kind of got to me because we I always sing that about our vehicles and stuff like that when we're out on the road. Pauline recognized it <laughs> from my garment version of it. And I've always liked that song by Neil Young. Um, I like the way he sings about uh, places where he's been. Like, there is a town in North Ontario. Yeah. It's Thunder Bay. And uh, he's singing about Northern Ontario in this one. It's back in Blind River. When I last saw you alive. Singing about his car. I love something. <laughs> that guy loves cars. I think better than women. He kind of, uh, he's relatively faithful, but he tends to dump them as he dumps groups. And then love the the one you're with. That kind of got Pauline's ear. They did a pretty good song. I liked their version. I thought they did. A oh, they did a great, great version of it. Uh, I this song is as catchy as I'll get out. I think it dates from 1970 or 71. Mm -hmm. And I caught my ear on the radio, but I just don't really <laughs> warm to the sentiments. If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. Oh, that's that's really fantastic, you know. Like you're a big rock and roll star, and there's going to be lots of people who want to be with you. Stuff like that. And uh, I don't care if there are lots of people hanging all over you in various states of undress and so on and so forth. If you're any sort of a guy... Or a woman, either. You don't go around loving the one you're with. Well, unless the one you, you're with is yourself. That's, <laughs> that's how you should do it. If, if you can't be with the one you love, then love yeah. yourself. Yeah. And then maybe that other person that you love will start to love you, too. Yeah. And then this one, I can't even remember. Find a Dream by Nash. Hopefully it was better than the other Nash vehicles. I don't know. I don't... <laughs> Like we listened to the last couple, and yeah. I don't really remember I don't remember, remember them, though. as I come of age. I can't remember. You must have been skills. talking or something. Yeah, sometimes these things happen, you know. And I, I, I remember was, um, 
the one man looking very, very large. Oh that's, my God! All. Well, because at that yeah. point we, um, I, I was looking at the video and it was yeah. He was yeah, on David well, Letterman. That's the thing. I yeah. shifted over. We shifted over. I yeah. started writing. So that's why. Remember them? Uh, they, you know, there were two guys that were large by that stage. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Stills and David Crosby. Mm -hmm. So even here, David Crosby's looking a little large, and Steve Stills is mm -hmm. getting a little bit bulky there, looking kind of like a, a former football player or something like that. You know, like uh, I was kind of joking as their hair receded with those two guys. The, uh, they were making up for it by putting on bulk around the middle. But, yeah, you know, like uh, David Crosby uh, actually found a good hairstyle. I, I liked that hairstyle, you know? Oh, really? I did. Okay. Exactly right. And uh, stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when he lost a little less hair, like around the time of Woodstock, it looked a bit more flaresome, shall we say, or, or whatever. But, but I think we're going to do this regularly. I drive and James watch music on yeah. the way to hiking. Watch and listen. He loves he yeah. loves music. I listen to it more than I watch because yeah. I'm prone to motion sickness, not really as prone as Pauline is, but I started to kind of feel a little bit queasy, not really bad, and then I was mainly looking up from the yeah. rear seats, looking uh, up at the horizon and put me back and so on and so forth. Yeah, it worked out well. I didn't get any motion sickness, really. And uh, stuff like that. I, I know when it's coming on. I you know how to deal with it. The thing you do is look at the horizon and so forth. Anyway, it's unfortunate they went with uh, as many Nash things as they did, but I really can't think of too many Graham Nash. I'd, I'd like to teach your children back when it came out. Mm -hmm. Kind of found uh, most of this. I like Marrakesh Express. That's on the first album. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, the so the rest of the stuff just doesn't work. Out. I'm going to since we only have a couple minutes left. I'm going to quickly talk about this. So oh, sorry about the that. The reason I that I put time. this one on because it's a spy thing. This one's a spy thing, yeah. and um, this was Trey Bon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really good, and uh, I. I didn't expect it to be. It's uh, French with English subtitles. It's a TV show about spies. Yeah. Uh, but this uh, this Bond was really entertaining, and plus you had Diana Rick in it. So I still had it around because James wants to watch the special features or whatever on this. So I thought, okay, well, to be so to show comparison, you'd still probably want to watch the Bond rather than this. But this was so good, I um, ended up falling asleep today because I really worked my muscles too much and uh, ate pancakes, which I don't, I don't eat pancakes, but it's whoop up days and it was. Um, That's there's about the only decent part of. Updates. Yeah. Uh, the crazy so, people in oh, the parking so lot yesterday yeah. that blew off fireworks. It sounded as though they blew them off like this. Well, yeah. We saw when we were coming back from the. There were some uh, guys in trucks at the end of the parking lot. Pauline says and four trucks were. I think four yeah. trucks. And I heard the boom too. But anyway, they launched it right across the parking lot to yeah. the heavily parked area. Yeah. They could have killed someone. They could have killed someone. So when we were pulling and out on Mayor McGrath Drive, then we saw police we saw a policeman on a going. motorbike ca coming. And James was like, well, you know who they're going after. And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, Pauline <laughs> was so, was so out of it. From the walk. That has <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was obvious uh, who they were going after. Yeah, someone had phoned that 